Hello, my name is Richard Crosland and I'd like to welcome you to my School of Fine Woodwork. The first thing we're going to do is dress a piece of timber all round. That is, convert it from rough sawn, like this piece, which is straight from the timber yard, to clean all round. That is, planed on all four surfaces and clean on the ends as well. Converting it from rough sawn to dressed. Okay, now the first thing we do is plane one surface with a hand plane and before you put it in the vise it's a good idea to check to see whether you can see which way the grain is going. I'm going to plane this surface here and if the grain is going up that way or this way out of that surface. Well looking at it I can see and I think you probably can too that the grain is coming up in that direction so I'm going to plane it that way. Now the actual technique of planing, what you're trying to do is to get a flat surface straight from one end to the other. You can use the plane itself as a straight edge to test. At the moment it's a little bit hollow still in the middle because it's still rough sawn. But the technique of planing is to put the weight on the nose of the plane as you come onto the timber and transfer the weight to the heel of the plane as you come off. That is in effect trying to plane hollow. But of course you can't do that because the plane is a straight line, but at least it stops you from doing the opposite and that is rounding it that way. You can see the sort of shavings that are coming off. That's about right for an ordinary hand plane. And what we're going to do now, I'm going to take it out of the vise and check it, check the surface to see whether it is straight, flat and true. Looking at it with a plane on the surface, it's pretty close to, to straight. There's a little bit of daylight showing at the two ends. Maybe it's a little bit high in the center. The other way you need to test is across the timber. That way to see that it's flat, which it is. So I'm just going to take a couple more strokes off and then retest. It's not a bad idea also to skew the plane slightly so that in effect what it's doing is slicing the tim timber rather than chopping it straight on. If you hold it straight on that way it tends to chop the timber rather than slicing. Right, now let's have a look at that one. <clears throat> there we are, that's pretty right. Pretty well straight all the way through. And this way also. So what we have now is the face side from which we take the readings for the squareness of the timber on its edges that way but remember that these are still rough sawn edges so they're not necessarily square so what I'm going to do now is put the timber back in the vise and plane one of the two edges either that one or that one to get that straight flat and true in its own right and also square to this new face that we've got I notice that it's taking very little off at the beginning of the stroke. In fact, the shavings are very, very light. Alright, let's test, test that surface to see whether that's straight, flat and true. A little bit high in the middle. I'm just going to take a couple of shavings off the centre of this surface. Start the stroke in from the end and finish before the end, just to take a couple of seconds off the middle. Again, use the plane as a straight surface. Oh, that's pretty right. Okay. So now we have a straight edge, but is it square with the face side that I did earlier? Test it with the square, tri-square. Now that's not bad, but it's not spot on. It's a little bit high 
on this edge here. Incidentally, this square is known as an engineer's square. And it's very good. It's a good size for small work. Generally, you can use a larger tri-square like this, but um, for small work like this, then the little engineer's square is perfect. So I'm going to put this back in the vise and just take a couple of shavings off this edge here. It's a good idea to mark with a pencil where you're going to plane so you can see when you've taken the, the surface off that you want to take off. Incidentally, pencils. I find the best hardness of pencil for use on timber is HB. H is too hard, it dents the timber. B, or less than that, is too soft and you get a very broad line. So HB is just about the right combination. And there we have a pencil mark showing where I have to take timber, take the surface off. Right, now, what I'm trying to do is to take it off this left-hand side of the edge. So I'm going to move the plane over so the edge that I want to take off is running underneath the middle of the plane. That should be enough. Again, checking to see whether that's straight and square, which it is now. So, we have now a face side and a face edge. The traditional marks for that is a loop which comes off on the edge with a little arrowhead coming out like that on the face edge. Can you see that? A loop on the face side with an arrowhead on the face edge. Okay, now, what we need to do is to decide what width the timber is going to be, what it's needed for, and planed accordingly. Well, this piece is really an exercise piece, so it's not critical to, to plane to any particular width. It's now about 48 or 49 millimetres wide. By the way, in cabinet making you talk in terms of millimetres, not centimetres, or in longer lengths, just in metres. This is about 48 millimetres wide, so I'm going to mark it off at 45. So we've got a piece of timber, we will have a piece of timber finished at 45 millimetres width. Okay, that now is the job of the marking gauge. Marking gauge is a stem with a pin through one end and a block which has a thumb screw in it to set it at any length along the length of the stem, along the stem. So the best thing is to set it roughly to where you think it should be at 45 millimeters. This in fact is about 43. So then you tap it, tighten it, <coughs> check the setting. That's about 44.5. So it needs to come down just a little bit more. Too much. And there we are, right on 45 millimeters. That is the distance from the block to the pin point, 45 millimeters. Now the marking gauge is a very useful little tool, but it's really quite tricky to master. What you need to do is to use the vise as a third hand. Any workbench, such as this one, should have at least one vise attached to it. And in this case, I'm using the vise on this end of the bench. What I'm going to do is put the block of the marking gauge against the face edge that I've just planed. And roll the tool, the marking gauge, up and down the length of the timber like that. Now, the way to do this, to master this tool, is to rest it, always rest it on that back edge of the stem. Always resting on that back edge. Never raise it off the timber. Always on the back edge of the stem. And have your thumb behind the pin. If you want to use your, your left hand to hold the nose of the marking gauge, you can do that. 
slide it up and down a few times, a little bit of pressure that way to make sure the block doesn't come away from the edge of the timber. Slide it up and down a couple of times just to get the feel of it. And when you're happy with that, at the beginning of the stroke, rotate the tool so the pin is literally just brushing the surface of the timber and retract it on the way up. Each time you rotate it so the pin comes in contact and rotate it back the other way so it doesn't dig in on the way back. A few light strokes like that and you get a lovely clean, crisp mark. I'll show you in, the, in, the, in detail in close up. Running the other bit that was in the vise, uphill, same thing again, but just get used to it running that way first, and then when you're happy with it, rotate it and run it, run, run the tool right off the end of the timber, as though it were continuing much further along. And there we have it. Can you come in on close up on that to show that mark? It's a good idea to use a pencil in the mark just to highlight it so it makes it more easy, more easily seen. Okay, now we have to continue that mark all the way around the piece of timber so that we know where we have to plane down to. So, put in the vise again, mark across the end with the marking gauge, a couple of strokes, that's it. Down the other side. Now this is on the rough sawn surface, so the, the tool will tend to bounce around a little bit on that rough surface. Slide it up and down a couple of times, and then rotate it at the beginning of the stroke, so you get a nice, clean, crisp mark down halfway, and then up the other half, as we did with the other surface. Straight off the end, run it right off the end, and there we have that mark there, and then across the other end. Get it all lined up, this is a very short run across the end, so you've got to get it all lined up so you can do a short, sharp run across the end. Zap like that, straight across, nice, clean, crisp line. Now I'll run the pencil all the way around in that marking gauge line. So then we can see it more clearly. Okay, now, what we have to do is to plane this rough sawn surface down to the marking gauge line. So again, look to see if the grain is running any particular way, or coming out of that surface in any particular direction, and then start planing. Test again. Now that is square, but I'm right down to the line, well, within a very, very small amount of the line here at the beginning of the timber, the beginning of the stroke. Not quite so much on this side, or a little bit more on this side. So now I've got to fine tune the waste that's left on there so that I finish on the marking gauge line, you know, that is in fact where the point of the pin of the marking gauge was. You notice that the, the shavings that are coming off now are very fine and that is getting very close. It's straight, flat and true, but Not only is it straight, flat and true, it's also square, but it's still a fraction away from the line. Can you see that? It's just a fraction away from the line, so I've got to take off just a few more strokes to make sure that it finishes where it's supposed to finish. If it's correct, 
in the right in the, in the right position according to the marking gauge line, you should just be able to peel that edge away like that is there. Can you see that? Where the fibers are coming away from the outside edge of the marking gauge line. And that's happening on both edges, so it's got to be pretty close to correct. So let's just test that once more. That's pretty right. And square. Not bad for a beginner. Okay. Just one point needs to be made about putting the plane down on the bench. The blade, remember, is protruding from the shoe of the plane. So you shouldn't put it, you should never put the plane flat on the bench like that because it would be resting on the blade. So either you put it on its side or across the well in the bench, if you have a well in the bench. Okay, now we have a piece of timber which is dressed on three sides. We have a face side, a face edge, and a clean second edge which has brought it down to the correct width. The next stage is <coughs> planing the piece of timber to the required thickness, that is in that direction. We've done the width, we're now going to do the thickness. The thickness of it at the moment as a rough sawn piece on the last surface is about 34, 34 millimeters. So supposing we say that we want to finish it at 30 millimeters. Okay, 30 millimeters back to the marking gauge set it to somewhere close to where you think it should be, about 30 mil, and then tap it into place. That's about 31, so tap it that way. Thirty millimeters, right. Locked on. By the way, a little ruler like this, a little steel ruler, 150 millimeters long, with clear calibrations, is almost an essential for um, working with um, <coughs> timber cabinet making work, woodwork. It's 150 millimeters. That is zeroed at both ends, so it's exactly 150 mil long. Okay, now back to the marking gauge. This time. We are marking it for thickness, therefore the line that we're going to mark is going to be close to the sawn surface. Now remember when I demonstrated for the other uh, use of the marking gauge to do the width, I was using the vise as a third hand. This time I'm going to do it just freehand held. Slide it up and down a couple of times, rotate it until the pin takes the very, very fine surface scratch in line with the other side of the timber. Run off the end, across the end of the timber, one zap like that, down the other side. Never lift, never lift the marking gauge stem off the timber like that, always running on that back edge there. Okay, run the pencil around the line, makes it easier to see. Always have a sharp pencil handy. In fact, even better, have two sharp pencils handy. Because Murphy's Law says that if you don't have two sharp pencils handy, you'll break one. Murphy's Law also states that if you do have two sharp pencils handy, you won't break one. Okay, now. This surface is to be planed down to the marking gauge line. Again, look to see the grain direction that I'm going to take off this surface. The grain direction appears to me to be coming up that way. So I should plane it in that direction. <clears throat> Hardly takes anything off to start with because it's running over a rough surface, but gradually the shavings increase.
Another point about using the plane is, is to get right behind the tool and right over the tool if you can. If you're tall enough, get over the top of the tool and use your whole body in the motion of the, of the, of the, motion of the tool. Don't just use your arms. It's very tiring very quickly. Use your whole body so your legs are pushing as much as, the, as your arms are. It makes it easier to get a clean, even shaving, too. Okay, now, if you can have a look at this, you'll see that the surface I've just planed is not even with the marking gauge line. It's thicker there than it is there. So, before I get too much closer to the line, what I have to do is to even that up. <coughs> Again, move the plane over so that the high edge that you're planing goes under the middle of the plane. Now let's see whether that's made any difference. Yes. In fact, that's pretty well even. close. Down to the line there, almost down to the line there, just a little bit further to go at the back end of the piece. So I have to plane and lift off before I get to the end here so that I don't take off any more than I want. And there we are, peeling away from the marking gauge line, there and there. Let's see whether it's square. Oh, not bad. Not bad. Straight, flat and true. No, just a slight lump in the middle, I'll get rid of that. Just there. That will be pretty right for a piece of timber which is now dressed all round. The only thing we haven't done is establish the length of the timber that we want and cleaned up the ends. Okay, so now what we have is a piece of timber dressed all round, that is it's clean and plain all round on all four surfaces to the correct width and the correct thickness. So what we need to do is to clean up one end before we measure the length that we want and cut it to that. Now there are various ways of, of cleaning up the end of a piece of timber uh, using a plane. If I put that straight in the vise like that and planed across with a hand plane like that, it's going to make an awful mess of the back edge of the timber will just break away. So somehow or other we've got to stop that happening. And the best way to do that is to use a block behind it to stop the fibres from breaking away on that back edge. So what we do is best to square a line around the timber first so that you know where you're planing down to 